How to import the basic assets with C++ in Unreal. It's funny how a simple action like drag and dropping an asset in the editor becomes complicated when we try to do it by code. And that's exactly why I want to show you how to do it. So let's get to it. So when we try to import an asset in Unreal, we actually have to do two steps. The first step is to create the import task, which is going to import the asset. We have to feed it all the settings it needs to know to be able to process the desired asset. And then we have to process that task. And as a result, it should give us the imported asset once the process is completed. So we're going to split that into three functions. The first one is to create the import task. And this is where we have to specify all the information Unreal needs to know to be able to import the asset. So the first information it needs to know is the origin of the asset, so the source path, and then the destination path, so where we want to save the asset in the project. And then we have two extra parameters right here. We have the extra factory and the extra options. We're not going to use them today because they are optional and they are only used to add some extra information, some very specific information depending on the asset type you want to import. And since in our case today, we're only going to process basic assets. We're not going to use those two parameters, but I left them there in the case you want to use them in your code. And then once this function is completed, it's going to return us the import task at the end. Import task that we then need to process it. And we're going to do that into another function, the process import task function right here. This function is going to take the import task as input and return us the imported object at the end. It's as simple as that. And since I'm actually super lazy, I'm going to create myself a third function that is going to combine those two functions together. So we don't have to call both of those functions every time we want to import a new asset so I have my third function right here, which I named the import asset. And we're only specifying the two variables we're going to use today. So the source path and the destination path. And as output, well, we're returning the imported object. And that's it. But to make sure that this code compiles properly, we have to add some forward declaration for the U asset import task and also for the U factory because they are not defined by default. So here at the top, I'm just going to add two forward declaration for those two classes. And that's it for the header file. Let's go in the CPP file to define those functions. And the first thing we're going to do is include the two header files we need, which are the asset tools module and the asset import task. And they are inside two different modules that we also need to include inside the CS file. So let's go back in there and we can include those two modules right here. These two modules are only available when the editor is running. So if you are packaging your game, it's probably not going to compile. OK, let's go back in the CPP and continue the logic. So to create the import task, the first step is, well, to create the import task. It's as simple as that. So I'm just going to do a new object to create the U asset import task we're going to use. And then I'm just going to add myself a little sanity check right here to make sure that the import task was created properly. I don't really see a reason why it would fail. The new object usually always work, but in the case that it fails, well, I would like to know it. So I'm just going to return a little information message right here. And now that the import task is created, we need to feed it all the parameters it needs to know to process the asset. And the first ones are the path right here. So that's what I'm going to do right there. For the source path, it's super simple. We just have to set it into the file name. But for the destination path, it's a little bit more complex because the task is expecting to receive the directory in which you want to save the asset in the destination path and the file name of the asset inside the destination name. Then after that, we have a few generic settings that we can set. So here they are. The first one is if we want to save the asset once the task is completed, which in my case, I'm setting to false because I want to save them myself. Then I'm going to tell my task that this is an automated process. So it's not going to show any pop ups to the user and interrupt the flow. This task is not an async task in my case. I want to process it right away. I'm going to replace the existing asset if it's already there, but I'm not going to replace its existing settings. And obviously you can change all those settings depending on your needs. And actually maybe even better than that, you can feed those settings as input inside this function. So you can control them for each of your tasks. And finally, we're going to set the optional settings inside the task. So we have the optional factory and the optional options right here. But as I said, we're not going to use them today. But in the case that you want to use my function in your project and you want to use those settings, well, it's just going to work and that's pretty nice. So good, now the task is created and set up properly. Now we just have to return it at the end of the function. Uh, first, I'm just going to tell my user that the operation was successful and then I can finally return the task at the end. 
And that's it. Now we can focus on the second part, which is to process the import task. And the first thing I'm going to do in this function is to make sure that the import task we receive as input is valid because we don't want to process an invalid task that will probably crash the engine. And that's not good. We never want to crash the engine. So right here, if the task is null pointer, I'm just going to return an error message and say that the task was invalid and I cannot process it. And now that we're sure that the import task is valid, we just have to process it. And that's super simple. Actually, not really, because we have to first get access to the asset tools module right here. So we have to load it. Then I'm just going to make sure that the asset tools module was loaded properly. Otherwise, it will not work. And then we can finally ask the asset tool module to import our task. So yeah, it's not that simple. But now it's done and the import should be completed. And now we're just going to check if the import worked or not. And to do that, I'm just going to check the list of objects that were imported during the import task is greater than zero because if it's equal to zero right here it means that we were not able to import any assets during the process and in that case well I'm just returning nothing at the end and telling the user that well I was not able to import any assets from the import task. But if it worked, now I want to return the imported asset at the end. And that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to recombine the path of my asset using the destination path and the destination name to retrieve the imported asset. And the reason why I'm doing it that way, instead of simply taking the first object in the imported object list that we have right here, it's simply because based on the asset type you just imported, it might have created multiple assets at the same time. And this object list right here is not ordered properly properly. We never know which objects is going to be the first one in the list. So we cannot simply just return the first object in the list because we want to return the right object, not any of them. Because for example, in the case that you import a skeletal mesh, it's going to create a skeleton and a physical asset on top of the skeletal mesh. And I'm expecting that the user calling this function right here is expecting to receive a skeletal mesh as output because the path of the asset that he wants to import is a skeletal mesh. So that's why right here I'm making sure that I'm returning the right asset at the end of the function. And then, yeah, we have the asset right here. We just have to return it right there. And that's it. Now I'm just going to scroll down a little bit to do the little wrapper function. And the logic is super straightforward. We have to first ask the first function to create the import task for us, feeding it all the information it needs. And then we can ask the second function to process the import task. And then once that's done, at the end, I can simply return the imported asset at the end right here. And that's it. Now it's time to go in Unreal to test all that. So in Unreal, I created myself uh, one simple widget right here to be able to debug uh, the new function. So here I can provide the source path of the asset I want to import and the destination path of where I want to import the asset. And then if I click on the import button, it should import the asset. Obviously, if I go in the graph, uh, we can see that when I click on my button, I'm only calling the import asset function, feeding it the source path and the destination path. And we're going to use this widget to try to import those assets right here on the right. So let's go back in Untitled right here. I'm going to go in my content and run my editor utility widget. Here it is. And now if I click on import, it should try to import my texture. And I think it worked. That's what it says. And I have my new test folder right here. And inside it, I have my new texture. And now let's see if we are able to import the audio file. So I'm just going to replace my assets right here. Here we go. And now if I click on import, it should import the audio file and it seemed to work. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for the FBX. So let's import it right here to do, 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 import the FBX. And now it created a warning for us, but whatever. And it imported the static mesh right here. And this is a perfect example of what I was saying while we were creating the function. This import created two assets for us. So the mesh and the world grid material but at the end of the function we returned the proper asset which is the mesh itself not the material that was also created during the same import and another thing to note is that none of my assets are saved automatically because I decided that it didn't want to save any of my assets during the import. And now if I try to re-import the same asset, it's going to re-import it on top of the previous one because I'm replacing the previous asset if it already exists. And now as a last test, I'm just going to try to import an asset that doesn't make sense. So let's say a text file that I have right here. I'm just going to rename my assets right here in the path. Here we go. And now if I click on import, we can see that Unreal was not able to import the asset. And it is probably because the asset type is not supported. As you probably know, Unreal is not able to import text files. But anyway, now you should be able to import any kind of assets in Unreal using C++. And that's going to be it for today. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.